long ago, Drawing with Waffles made a video series where she drew fan art in alphabetical order according to the character's first letter in their name. Then I came along and copied the idea. Drawing Azula! Avatar The Last Airbender is probably one of my favourite series next to Mob Psycho 100, so I had to draw a character that started with A to honour the great series of Avatar The Last Airbender. When I was writing a list out of characters and thinking of like which ones were fit in which one, I think Azula was probably the first one I did because I practically made this whole series just to draw Azula. Like I could have drawn Azula at any time, but I wanted to draw her in this series because she deserves to be first. And since the characters are based on fire, it gave me a chance to do some cool lighting. And you know how much I like my lighting. Lighting is the best. And I love the way the lighting came out in this drawing. I think it's one of my best drawings because of it. And I, I just think drawings look a lot better when I like think a lot about where the lighting is going to be and stuff. Because a lot of the time I kind of give my characters a lot of generic lighting. And I think it can be better. And I think this is one of the examples of when I do it really well. The other day I was re-watching the Azula Zuko fight at the end of the series and I was just like kind of looking at the lighting like whenever she burst out the flu blue flames like everything goes blue and I was like oh, I love the series like it's just got so much attention to detail to it and the animation is just stunning like I think when they did the um, animation they sent it to all the different animation studios and they were like, oh, you don't need to just, like, match the mouth movements, you just do whatever you want. And they were like, yes, we have to animate. And then they animated it and it looked amazing and I'm going to fangirl all over this. I just really love good animation. Like, good animation and lighting, yes, that is the best. And this series gets them both great. The reason why Mob Psycho 100 is my other favourite for the series is because they get like animation and lighting so good, like it's so exaggerating and stylized, I love it. I should probably stop fangirling and start talking about the drawing now. So when I was thinking about poses and like making all the little thumbnails, I was looking at references of um Tai Chi Chun. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but the martial arts that was um the basis of fire bending. And it's funny because every time I found a picture of like all the different poses, they always had like um they had the name of the martial arts at the bottom and then brackets fire bending because like at this point that's all this martial arts is known for. <laughs> Cause and I that's another thing I like about the animation that was based on martial arts and you can see all the like different references of the different poses and stuff and it's just like I love stuff like that. And the thing is I didn't really actually use any of those references because I ended up just doing my own thing and these feet ended up being the worst I just couldn't get these feet right <laughs> and I, I like redid them over and over again I just couldn't get them right I think in the end they look okay but I think the back foot could have been a lot better because I just uh, and the feet the feet were so hard as well because they she has weird shoes do that thing at the end and every time I draw feet they don't do that thing and it's really confusing because <laughs> like you don't know when to extend them or something because you've got to like fit in the toes or the toes curl up and I'm just trying to think of the feet under the shoes. I was also um I don't do fan art all too much because one of the things I hate doing is looking for references and because when you're looking at reference for a character almost all of them are done from like a half body perspective so it's really hard to find references of legs and feet which seems really random but trust me like if you google a person or anything try and find their feet it's hard and i don't want to google azula feet because i'm scared about what that would come up with so when i was finding references for azula i found um I found a few good ones of um what she wears in book two, but I wanted to do what like the thing she wears in book three because it like looks cooler with the armor and stuff and like that feels more Azula like than what she wears in book two, even though she wears it. Whatever. And the thing is, I couldn't find any clear references of her legs, and the best ones I could find were like um ones of fan art and stuff. So I ended up like 
using that as one of the references but then i think the one that i looked at um had messed up her legs as well because i think it's a mixture of what she wore in book two and book three because i think she has some like weird and different boots on in book three you might also notice that i did line art for this one and you can see me like deviating where the hair is going on the line art for this because um well how i drew it is she's kind of like turning from um she she's turning to her right so the hair would be like going in the opposite direction because that's like how motion goes in art and stuff like um if something turns right then it will the fabric turns left because drag and stuff but um i didn't do that in the sketch so i changed up in the um in the line art and i don't usually do that because i i i, re I really hate line art like usually if you have a bad sketch then you have bad line art but i just i didn't bother redrawing it and i uh, yeah i still did line art and stuff for the whole thing and it's just a really tedious and boring process but if you get it right it looks so good it's why I'm experimented with more sketchy style because I don't want my comic book to take forever to draw. Like I haven't even started yet and it's taking forever and I want to finish it sometime. Like this is kind of the whole reason I'm doing this series. Like um, if I draw figures like faster then I'll be able to draw the comic faster. So if I draw a lot of figures then I'll get better at practicing them and stuff. So that's why I'm kind of doing an alphabetical order series where I have to like draw 24 characters and I, I kind of want to get it done like kind of quickish so I'm like trying to get these characters done really fast and I also have a lot of commissions on top of that and I'm still adding line art to all the commissions because I kind of want to make all the commissions look same-ish so when people order a commission they kind of know what they're getting into instead of like having me experiment because I think I've had that before and some like I used to experiment with backgrounds and stuff and one person was like hey can you just not do a background it's like oh yeah people commission me for the characters not the backgrounds maybe I should just focus on the characters and not the backgrounds backgrounds are also a thing I should probably pr practice on can I do like an alphabetical background series I have no idea how that would work I'm getting off topic again <laughs> I'm really bad at this and <laughs> so the reason I did this weird pose is like I wanted a flame to be like kind of wrapping around the character so I could experiment with the lighting a bit like have um, the lighting kind of a dynamic lighting so it's just, like different and interesting I don't know <laughs> one thing I experience a lot when I'm drawing is I'll have a good sketch of a hand but when I get to doing the line art of it it just completely changes like there's all these people saying that the sketch always looks better than line art for all these reasons and stuff but it's like the hands specifically they look good in the sketch but then the line art i just can't get them right and i don't know it's annoying why are hands like this everyone complains about the hands and it's like why why haven't we evolved yet just to have simpler hands which are easier to draw <laughs> Less practical, but easier to draw. I think I was just having a bad day when it came to drawing hands, so I just kind of um, split my focus and went to a different part and started working on that before I went back to the hands. And it is hands and feet. Hands and feet are hardest. Um, I don't draw many bare feet, but when I do, they're hard. <laughs> oh yes, I, I need to do more figure drawing practices. I need to draw my hand. I need to do more drawing hand practices. Um, I, I'm a very unfocused person, like, I find it easier if I kind of, um, go to somewhere else if I'm finding it harder and just do that instead and then come back to the problem later, and a lot of time I experience the same problem when I'm doing the problem later, but on the occasion, I get the problem better when I do it later, and that's nicer, and I think that's the way everyone works, so I'm not a person like that, I don't. I mean, before I started recording these videos, I used to um, have loads of different canvases open and I would kind of bounce around from one project to another and since I've been recording I've kind of been doing that less and my computer's been crashing a lot less which is nice I don't keep on losing my work I should also probably practice picking colours for the drawing on a 
mid-tone background like loads of people suggest that and I just never get around to doing it and when I was when I was doing this I kind of colour picked some weird colours I think it was mostly because the references I had were I put them on a lower opacity because I'm not sure if I'm gonna get into any trouble by using references or anything but uh, I don't know and so I just kind of um colour picked ref colour picked I didn't colour pick, I um, tried to pick references, tried to pick colours as best I could. I can't talk. And I think she came out a little more purpley than any of the references. But whenever you see like a dark colour, it's better not to use like a pure black or anything. It's better to make a, um, a different colour. And I kind of like the purple. I, when you're looking at a reference and you see a colour that looks like black, Usually it's not black, usually it's something like a very, 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 very dark blue. <laughs> and I also use the purple as the shading, the shade lighting, so she's standing in a room, I guess, which is purpley, so all the ambient light, all the light hitting the shadows would be purple, and that way she's a more purple figure. I just put one purple multiply layer of the whole thing to make it darker and then I kind of did I painted in all the lighting and afterwards I made a curved tone layer to make all the secondary shadows I guess but the fun part was drawing in where all the blue light hit onto the figure so all the blue I'm adding onto the figure because that's the light from the fire being well, hit onto the figure. <laughs> and I think I I made it into a soft light layer to make it just go better with the things under it or the colours under it and work well because that's that's what most of the um the layer modes are. They just make it easier for the things under the layer mode or under the layer to go through. So when you see someone use the multiply layer it's just so the shading, it's multiplying the layers underneath to make the shading look better. Technically, I could have done it without using any layer modes, but I would have had to um, colour pick each individual colour on the drawing of where the blue light was going to hit and change that differently from each other. It's just a more efficient way of doing it and it doesn't necessarily look better to if you were to do it all differently by hand, pick, hand picking every colour. It's just a lot faster to use a layer mode in some cases. So you notice that the blue light hitting the blackish part of the dress is different from the blue light hitting the golden accents in the dress. I I use that for some of the most of the lighting effects in this drawing. Uh, so I had a soft light for some of the blue lights. And what I think I think at first it didn't look amazing. And I wasn't exactly sure what to do, so I did that thing again. I went back to a different part of the drawing. I started adding I highlights instead of flames. I should have looked at more references of fire and like how how they animated it in the series before I drew that. But I kind of went off it, and it looks a little bit like water, but it's fine. It's it's fine. And then I went back to the blue layer, and I thought there's a lot more places here where I can add blue light. Because when I'm drawing, sometimes I think there's areas where I think I should do this, but then I think I do too much of it. And you kind of want to get the balance of, I don't want to do too much, but I don't want to do not enough. And I think I did enough, is what I'm trying to say. Originally, I wasn't going to add the second shading layer, but I think when I looked at it overall, with just the blue light, I just thought, I think this does need some shadows in it, because it's, it's a light source essentially, so it would be still casting shadows no matter how dark I made the figure before, so I went in and added some more shadows, and I think it just made it look a lot more cohesive and effective in that way, just because it, it feels a lot more like a dynamic light source when I added the shadows, and it's such a simple thing, but I was so easy to overlook it. And afterwards, I decided I wanted another light source in. 
because my original idea for the drawing was she was going to be firebending some orange fire around her feet or she was just going to be standing in some fire i didn't end up drawing the fire in but i still added the um the orange light source coming up because it just makes it just makes the drawing look a little more dynamic and prettier and i like it and it just turned out so great and this is one of the best things i've ever drawn <laughs> thank you for watching i appreciate comments and likes and i hope you liked watching the little drawing process of this and i hope to do more of these in the future because this was fun and thank you